Well, good morning, dear. So, this is uh, our uh, mathematical foundation of robotics class, second class. Okay, in COVID situation, COVID nineteen situation, both lockdown, lock. What is that? Unlock. Okay, some confusion is there, but anyway, under this scenario, the other day we we discussed what is what is a robot. What is degrees of freedom? What is degrees of mobility? These are all concepts we try to clarify, and then we also told you that robot. Is a serial kinematic chain, uh, mathematically or from mechanics point of view. Also, the robot is reprogrammable universal machine. Okay. Now, this uh, robot uh, need to be modeled. Why? Because if we want something to be reprogrammable, it has to be controlled by computer. and computer does not understand a physical system unless it is modeled in an appropriate way which it understand okay so a mathematical model we need to develop so that's why the course name is mathematical foundation in a r o with a room se all outside the kya ho sakte hai na so aim is for mathematical foundation robotics main objective would be to develop a mathematical model of a physical system which is a robot here and once it is developed then we will forget about the physical system only our program our mathematical model and computer will do all kind of jobs means uh, uh, controlling activities it will do again it will not do anything it will can or it can only uh, run some program give you some output and again those outputs has to go to another controller which we call uh, um, execution level controller right so if you see any robot okay let's say we have bextar uh, which is a manipulating robot the other day you have seen the now robot okay so any robot in the world i should say have two kind of controller one is actually Uh, while programming is running, you are making a model that is called computer. Okay, that is called um, master computer. Okay, and another one uh, we call it uh, another controller. You will get this is also a computer. You can say another uh, controller you will get at each joint level. That is called execution level controller. Because as I said. uh computer program can only output some uh, value some digit and with digit a physical system cannot run cannot move right so physical for moving a physical system you need some kind of device which we call actuator okay for example uh, you need to install a motor which is controllable uh at the joint okay Uh, and in our case of course it is different you see we have link this is my hand this is my um uh, shoulder right and this is my uh, forearm right and then they are moving with respect to the joint who is moving it then eh? muscle right which is called actuator in case of robot the most commonly used actuator is actually uh, motor motor could be uh, not ordinary motor okay motor could be dc servo motor uh, now it is ac servo motor is also there means the motor should be controllable okay controllable by computer okay that means it should be able to get instruction and it should be able to follow the instruction in real time so we have two types of controller one is master another is slave slave is attached at the joint level master is attached at the planning level okay 
nowadays of course this master slave terms are not good okay so we are attached with some stigma so let us try to avoid there are uh, other kind of nomenclature master computer is called uh, planning level control okay Plan planner so our main objective of the course will be confine how to design the plan okay let us put our uh, thought mainly here and other the slave uh, controller uh, is known as execution level control planner executor executor so planning level control so in control perspective execution level control execution level control so robot is all about control because it is a physical system and we are trying to model that physical system uh so that computer will understand and what is the purpose purpose is to control the robot the way we want it. okay so let us now slowly slowly try to understand some details right say we want robot to follow a trajectory like this it could be a painting or simply trajectory this for trajectory trajectory is a jargon term which has beautiful meaning okay it could be uh, okay this is okay so it could be a a, a, a painting like this it may be art welding it may be uh, technical mechanical uh, jobs okay or it could be simply some letter this is also trajectory say robot is trying to uh, write its own name my name is robot okay my name is robot whatever okay human so is it very complicated trajectory if i want robot to write okay so basically the problem is how to control a robot to follow a trajectory which is given by me okay so to do that is very complicated task we need to know a priori many fundamental concept which i will try to um describe here say robot could be actually um, more complicated than this but um, if i learn how to model a simple robot then and extend it uh, to uh, model a complicated robot that's called um, uh, fundamental from fundamental to scale up okay so that's what we are trying to do uh, instead of directly going to model a puma or a dexter type robot we will try to consider a two link robot say i have two link robot one link is grounded here and here i have a motor right who is actually moving this link so i have two link here this one link this is another link say my length of this link is l1 and say the length of this link is l2 by the way terminology is this is link this is another link this is one joint this is another joint and motors are actually mounted on the joint uh, they will actually rotate uh, if have motor if the motor is rotated then uh, the link will move okay So this is my two link robot. Very simple. Okay. So if I try to make a model, first I need to 
capture the kinematic relation, which is actually if I move this much, that much, then how the end effector, this is incidental, is called end effector or gripper. Okay, it could be simply uh, open close tight gripper or it could be much more complicated gripper. Normally, in all modern robots, we have a gripper library. Okay, depending on uh, whatever you need from the library, you can just uh, take those grippers while the main robot remains the same. Okay, so it is very highly objective that you have libraries for gripper, libraries for actuator, and now uh, concept is going that um, robot as service, okay, uh, service oriented robotics means instead of uh, designing a particular robot, you have all this component of the robot and my client is telling I need this kind of robot for material handling, this kind of material handling. Other client is telling I need this kind of robot for pick and place. My engineer will go there, will study their requirement and assemble, taking uh, parts from the library, assemble the robot as per their requirement. And as soon as the work is over, you should be able to dismantle it again. It's called reusability. It's highly object-oriented uh, method, right? Reusability of the components of the links and everything, right? Is that it is getting a lot of uh, popularity. Okay. So we are trying to tell you that gripper could be this kind of thing, right? Now to make it more, I need to first. To make it a uh, kinematic relation, I need to first represent this 2D and for representation, I can think of a Cartesian coordinate frame. Okay. This is very simple tooling, planar manipulator, which is not practical, but for understanding the principle, this is the beginning. Okay. So, I have attached a coordinate frame, uh, X and Y, where I can uh, create a relation between uh, some say this point as coordinate x, y, okay, in Cartesian space. And suppose at any instant of time, this link is making an angle theta 1 with x axis and this link is making an angle theta 2 uh, with respect to this previous link. So this is measured with respect to the x-axis, this is measured with respect to the previous link. Now, I know the geometrical parameter when robot has been designed, L1, L2 are known to me, and motor is rotating, so of course, incidentally, these are all functions of time. Okay, means robot is moving like this. And I have captured the figure for an instant t where the, this has the theta 1 t, theta 2, right? And I can avoid t, but you, it is very important for you to understand that theta is not constant always, theta 1, theta 2, then the robot will not move, the function of time. So what is the relation between this Cartesian space value x, y and incidentally now we call them Join space theta 1 and theta 2. They are measured where some sensor at the joint. Okay. Incidentally, they are called encoders. Okay. The various kinds of encoders are there. Okay. We will talk about uh, those things when we study sensors. So, say, now I would like to, I have all the materials to create a simple model that is a relation between Cartesian space. Now we are called, uh, this space is called Cartesian space where the robot is moving and the robot has another space. It is moving in the Cartesian space by manipulating its own joint values. We call it joint space. Okay. So Cartesian space. We have Cartesian space and we have joint space. So, simple things for scale up, need understand, need you need to understand in more general way. That's why I am making all this terminology. 
So pass to G. So what is X? X is equals to let's see. Okay, this X component. Just project L one cos theta one plus L two cos theta one. This is theta one and this is theta two. Theta one plus theta two, isn't it? Because now I am resolving with uh, in the direction of x, and theta two was the angle with respect to its previous name. So that's why it will be plus. Similarly, y is nothing but the this component when it is resolved in. Um, Y direction, all this you can consider as a vector. L1 sine theta 1 plus L2 vector sine theta 1 plus theta. You see, some beautiful relation we have got that is, what is X? X is related with L1, L2, that is, link length. Okay, means. By rotating theta one and theta two, where the end vector will go is actually x. Okay, uh, along x, where the end vector will go along x is x, where the end vector will go along y is called y. X y is the coordinate, any point. Okay, now if the robot is trying to move from here to here. Now we are talking about a trajectory, we want to follow the trajectory, so the robot will move like this. That means the, the, the joint space values will be actually manipulated and the robot will stress this trajectory. Very, very difficult job, but we'll talk about that, how it happens. Okay. First of all, the trajectory which is inputted or we have commanded robot to follow must be within its reachable workspace. Okay. Uh, if I, if my wind length is this, if I call robot, tell robot, go there, will it be able to go? No. As simple as this, my hand has limitation. If I am trying to reach some of my students there, I will not be able to. I will have to um, take help of my legs. I uh, will have to have additional mobility. Similarly, if you uh, install the robot on a mobile vehicle or some which can actually move, then it will be able to move there. But we are considering for the time being, for simplicity, a robot which is as simple as this tooling planar manipulator and a robot which is actually non-mobile, it's called manipulating robot, it's very fixed. There I was able to formulate a relation between partition space value and joint space value. This is a function of time, this is a function of time, this is a function of time. All are function of time, except of course L1 and L2, they are fixed. When the robot is designed, they cannot change. Okay. Uh, but all other things are changing when the robot is moving. So, this movement drama will try to take care of, okay, can first kinematically, taking this very simple example, we will formulate two very basic problems, one is called forward kinematics. The basic fundamental problem of basic problem of robotics. In the, In the next class we will talk about we will start from here. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Bye.